welcome to Felix Stone Matters on this Wednesday morning. Today we have a dentist in to give us a bit of an understanding of what's going on in the dentistry world. So with me is Frederick Anderson. Hello Frederick. Hello, good how morning. Are you, how are you today? I'm very well, thank you. Good. So, so before we get into the real dentistry stuff, tell us a little bit about yourself and, and your links to Felixstowe. Yes, I've, I've, been, I've been working in Felixstowe for about three years now. Okay. Uh, I moved to Suffolk about 13 years ago, so I grew up and graduated in Sweden. Oh, okay. And um, at the time, the jobs were few and far between in Sweden. Oh, okay. And me and my wife thought it would be an opportunity to move to England um, and take it from there and, and we've stayed, we, we like the area so much that we haven't had any thoughts of going back. Okay. Um, I've worked in various places in, in Suffolk mm. over the years and, and now ended up in, in Felixstowe. Ah, so, so where are you in Felixstowe exactly? On Nine Cobbled Road. So do, which oh, just down the road from us. Just it? down yeah. the road from here, um, <laughs> Implant Cosmetic and Denture Centre. Ah, okay. It, it used to be Felixstowe Dental Laboratory. Ah, okay. But we had a good yeah. sort of working relationship and decided that we should do dentistry as well as laboratory work ah. there. So, so you you mentioned you have a family. You've yes, four children. Oh right. And. Uh, which, which is really, besides <laughs> dentistry, well, probably ahead of dentistry. That's that's not yeah. the the passion of my life. So, do, so do they want to become dentists? Not at the moment. Not we'll at the see. moment. They're, they're, they're between, <laughs> well, they're two, eight, ten, and twelve years yeah. of age, um, and squash is very much a, a oh, part gosh. of the, the, the their lives at the moment. My mm. two boys are very keen. Mm. Squash players. Uh, one is the county champion as of a few weeks ago. Oh, really? And, uh, and the other one is the runner up. <laughs> so. Oh, wow. So, so the dynamics in your family are, are interesting or, or yes. a bit competitive, I guess? But Very competitive, yeah. but in a nice way. Oh, in a nice way. Lovely. So <laughs> it's. Um, yeah, they, they can be very competitive, but it's it's not to the point we can't play board, board <laughs> games and, and things like that. <laughs> so so as as you mentioned, you're a dentist in um, Felix though. So so are, are you private or are you NHS? Yes, or? Um, it's a private practice yep. um, for for several reasons. One one is that the primary care trust will not allow you really to get an NHS contract. Okay. They claim that there's sufficient um, sufficient number of dentists to look after patients mm. um, so they won't grant a new contract. Yeah. Uh, secondly, they don't really allow you to do, if you work in the NHS you have targets to meet, um, they don't allow you to do perhaps all the, the, the new things that you'd wanted to do, so you're a bit restricted mm. uh, in, in that way. NHS has been great for this country, for dentistry, for, mm. for medicine, but it's not exactly forward thinking uh, and, and adapting to, to new materials, techniques, etc. So, so as a private-run um, dentist, you can actually look at these new technologies um, and uh, different techniques. Yes, that, and, that and implement in, into your okay. daily practice. Okay. Um, it, as with all new technologies, it, it comes at a price. Indeed, yes. Um, which I think constantly is being driven down as well. There's more and more manufacturers mm. catching up, yeah. um, which makes technology cheaper, yeah. oh. but there's obviously that, that's... So, so, so as a private run, um, presumably there's a, a regulator or something similar that, that um, yes. sort of keeps an eye on, on both presumably NHS and, and private as well? Yes. Um, recently, and that's as from last year mm. um, we are regulated by the Care Quality Commission yep. um, they regulate 
historically hospitals and nursing homes. Okay. It's now um, also regulating um, private ambulances. I believe opticians and GP surgeries will be regulated mm. shortly as well. Um, and then the General Dental Council, which is the, the professional body that we have to be registered with. Okay. Well. Okay. So, so, so the uh, the Care Quality Commission is quite a broad, broad, it, expansive yes. sort of um, uh, regulator, as it yeah, were. It is. So, um, so what sort of contact do they have with you, or is it is it more of a um, you you can only do this, you must do this, or or is it they so they they introduce rules uh, essentially. Okay, yeah. uh, they that will specify how you need to clean your instruments, um, how you should treat patients mm. and staff yep. alike, etc. Um, unfortunately, they don't give you much um, support in, <laughs> in how, to, how to carry this out okay. in the best way. They, they leave it very much to us yep. to decide what is the right way of doing things, mm -hmm. abiding by their rules. Mm. Um, so they could they could be more supportive. Um, but specifically the... given, I think, that up until two years ago, mm. I don't think they knew anything about dentistry. <laughs> and they've been appointed as a regulator. <laughs> oh, right. So but on the flip side, I suppose it gives you the the scope to to figure out the best way to to deal with the rules that have been laid down yeah. in your own in your own yeah. manner and way okay you, you, you need you need yeah. to adapt them to your setting your yeah. practice um, everything may not be applicable mm. to every dentist or every practice yeah there are certain core <laughs> uh, subjects yes um, which, which obviously applies to to everyone okay okay so so now, being a dentist, having all that that stuff. I mean, I I'm back in the '80s now. I'm thinking Little Shop of Horrors, the the musical film with the slightly mad dentist. Yeah. So, so people presumably still have kind of phobias and. Absolutely. So 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 when someone with a phobia like um you know trying to avoid the dentist by the other street as you were mentioning. Yeah. How do you, how do you how do you deal with them when they actually come in? Well, we try. <laughs> very much to, to have a team approach to make people feel comfortable. Mm. Um, my, work, my, my nurse and I, Pam is my nurse, we've worked together for about eight years. Oh, right. She's a, a, a very calm and, and sort of confident person mm. um, and um, sometimes actually just getting a prospective patient who's very, very nervous mm. to come in mm. for for a talk with the nurse in the waiting room yeah. is is a good way of of initiating some confidence and building it up. So they may not even see me. Okay. And I might be there and <laughs> introduce myself, but but, but yeah. just to have that initial communication with the nurse, mm. they they know nothing will happen. Mm. There's no injections, nothing like yeah. that. Just trying to build up a rapport with a patient, and many times those patients will will come back as as regular patients, turning up for routine checkups, mm. hygienist visits to to keep the gums healthy. Yeah, um, and and those patients are are often you get a, a great contact with them mm. because they they tend to follow you as well I've, I've, I've had some patients mm. sort of finding me from where I used to work in Milden Hall many years ago okay um, and it's quite a, quite a distance to travel mm. uh, but it, it's very nice when mm. when you manage to well not cure someone's fear because that, that those patients will always be uneasy about yeah, yes. being at the dentist, but mm. at least if they mm. can not sweat about it or lose sleep about it, it's very nice yes, because indeed. you, with, with regular checkups, etc., you can, you can often prevent many things, not everything, but things yeah. will always 
feelings will always break, mm. perhaps, and, mm. and you have an accident and things like that. But Bang. you can prevent a lot of major problems by that. So it, yeah. it's nice if you can manage those sort of nervous patients. Yeah. And I think because we're not NHS, we're not driven by targets, mm. and we can set that time aside yes. to, to talk to patients, explain the options, mm. and just really educate patients. Yeah. Because I think historically, patients have not known much about dentistry. No. In terms of what's available, yeah. are there alternative materials? Yes. Uh, for instance, we we're an amalgam-free practice. We we don't use amalgam, okay. which is the sort of metal filling material, um, which is is a toxic material, um, <laughs> yes. yeah. and most people have amalgam fillings in their mouths mm. and. and to be honest, they've, they've done very well mm. for many, many years, but it's a toxic material, it's mm. black, teeth are white. Yes. And <laughs> um, it, it's just that we, 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 we don't do that, and yeah. obviously... Okay. So, so, so it sounds like it's, it's com communication. Um, yeah. If you, can, if you can communicate and make someone feel at ease, then you're, 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 you're sort of like half the way there to getting them. Yeah, so, I think so. Um, I mean, um, sort of, obviously you're always going to have injections, you're always going to have some form of drilling if, if need be. Yeah. Um, and obviously over the years the tools are, are getting better and... Um, yeah. I wouldn't say pleasant, but, no. uh, but, but but presumably the noises and all that kind of stuff are reduced, which I, I yeah. presume is one of the phobias of yeah. the, the drill. It's, it is. Yeah, yeah. It's always going to be, as you say, yeah. noise. Yeah. Uh, but by large, the sort of the vibrations and, and everything associated with that mm. is perhaps not disappearing altogether, but, but it's getting less and less uncomfortable mm. although it should never hurt mm. but it's, it's the vibrations and, yes. and the noise and all that but it, it's getting better and, and there's a lot of exciting developments mm. as well okay. um, in, in dentistry both mm. materials and, and equipment and techniques presumably yeah, well, yeah. absolutely so, so as we're a, a community TV, do you, is there a dentistry community? Do you get together at Christmas, or, or is it is it more of a, a lonesome kind of job? It it is quite a lonesome job. Job. Yeah. It, it's um, there's not a, a great sort of well Suffolk dental community. Yeah. I mean, we we obviously if you belong to the British Dental Association, they mm. would have a local committee, mm. and there are regular meetings yep. perhaps four time four or five times a year oh, okay. uh, evening meetings where, where sort of local matters are discussed mm. and, and I think if you if you turn up to these meetings and yep. um, you will always meet fellow dentists <laughs> yes. um, I've, I've, I've had sort of over the last two years most of my time outside of work and, and family has gone to mm. uh, a, a course that I'm doing at the Royal College um, in London, okay, and um, part-time course yep. over two years, but it, it's it's taking up a lot of time when you yeah. try and fit it in amongst everything else. So I haven't perhaps been that active, uh, okay. and well, with, with mm. well, I certainly haven't done other courses because yeah. I haven't had time. Um, mm. Apart from the mandatory, mm. you need to do certain courses to stay on, on oh, the register, register yes. um, okay. in, including medical emergencies, x-ray updates, oh, etc. Okay. Um, but, but apart from that, I've oh. sort of dedicated my time to this um, diploma course, which hopefully, because <laughs> there is no, at, at, as of yet, there's no speciality in implants, which is what I'm Sort of feeling most excited about, okay. but hopefully, when that is is brought up, mm. I, this course will enable me to to register okay. as as a special 
Ah, okay. So, I mean, we, we've talked about private giving you more opportunity to do slightly different techniques and use different technologies. So, so what's the latest technology out there that people are excited about, people coming in and wanting done to their teeth? Yeah, yeah. it's... The, the exciting developments are more behind the scenes. Oh, okay. So, obviously, we've, we've got... Um, Botox, which is to reduce wrinkles mm. to to your forehead and, mm. and around your eyes, mm. dermal fillers, tooth whitening, etc. That that's obviously that, that there's a big demand for that, okay. um, and they are generally very straightforward mm. procedures to carry out with with no known side effects and and not even painful. Okay. Um, and so that's obviously that's come a long way, mm. but it's more technology-wise how we work and how we process information, mm. teeth and um, implants can be scanned onto a computer. Three mm. D software will will be connected to a milling machine, which will mill uh, teeth. Wow. Uh, substructures and, and other components that might be necessary so it's it's, mm. it's increased the precision mm. incredibly so mm. so just going back a minute um the I think implants are the the exciting thing from what I'm gleaning yes. from, from that so, yeah so what is an implant for anyone who doesn't actually know an implant uh, is, is a small titanium screw like structure mm. okay. acting very much like a raw plug in a wall if you want to put a picture up or a bookshelf yeah. mm. uh, so the implant itself is placed in the jawbone mm. and it's an anchor point for either a tooth okay. several teeth or a denture oh okay okay so it acts as a, a fixation point oh. really so if yeah. the, the biggest benefit Perhaps, I, I, well, from my experience, is people who have dentures mm. which move around when you eat yes. and they're not very comfortable and they rubbing on your gums so you get ulcers. Uh, okay. Well, in, in, in most circumstances, you can place two implants, mm. attach the denture with something which is similar to a push button. Yeah. So a, a, a retention element. Okay. You clip your denture on to okay. the implant and the denture stays in place. Ah. And on occasions you may need four implants, but quite often, especially in the lower jaw, okay. two implants is, is fine and you can then have a fixed denture. It's still removable yeah. because it makes it easy to clean, mm. um, but fixed. Wow. And you can you can eat... Whatever you, you know, want. Whatever you want, oh, really? more or less, yeah. Do you still need denture cream? No, no. You don't, so that's no. gone are the days of... Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, wow. So, so it sounds quite a scary idea of, in essence, screwing something into your, into your jaw or yeah. whatever. So how on earth did this, this come about? <laughs> yes, it, it, the, the, first, the first implants were placed in patients in the late 60s. Okay, so it's quite uh, an old. It's yeah. it's quite an old technology, but in the sixties it was very much experimental, mm. um, and and dentists and doctors were trying to figure out sort of mm. how to get this to work. It started with a Swedish dentist okay. um, in Gothenburg, mm. and he was doing some experiments on rabbits, okay. and he was measuring the the growth pattern of bone. He implanted some titanium rods into the into skeleton the, okay. of, of the rabbits um, and then when the experiment was finished mm. he wanted to retrieve his titanium, titanium. rods yeah. potentially to use them again okay. and realized he couldn't get them out. So they yeah. grown so fused, they bonded, they they bonded did, yeah. to the bone oh, okay. and, and that started the, the thoughts process of that uh, we've got to be able to use this for, for something useful. So it was a light bulb moment. Yeah. Of came and, on. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Okay. And, and and then it developed mm. over the years 
in in the seventies and eighties yeah. uh, into what we've got now mm. with the modern dental implants. Okay, so uh, I think you started to um, explain the process, which sounds complicated to say. Yeah. So, so presumably it's it's very computer based. It's, it is. It's, so, so going from going from screwing a titanium bolt or whatever into your um, into your yeah, jaw, which, which is yeah. local anaesthetic. Yeah. as if you were to have a filling. Yes, it, yeah. it's it's not a painful it's not procedure. Painful, but... It's surprisingly quick oh, as well. Okay. The, yeah. the, the time-consuming part is that we, we all dress up as mm. you would in a hospital theatre. Yes, indeed. Um, everything's got to be sterile, you've I got a sterile yeah. drape, yeah. gloves, everything like that. And, mm. and that takes a lot of time mm. to prepare. Yes. Uh, the procedure itself Isn't that is, <laughs> if it's very straightforward, it yeah. probably wouldn't take 10 minutes. Okay. okay. Um, but it's just everything around it. Okay. So the so that that's that. But the getting the um, get it. You mentioned milling and so, yes. So can you just give us an understanding of what that actually means? Because yes, I mean, I'm thinking of a sawmill, but let, yeah. let, let's not. It's <laughs> it, it's um, with scanners. You can actually you, you, you'd scan the tooth and you get a three D three D picture. Image. Okay. Yes. And which is read by by the, the computer software. Yeah. That is then transmitted mm. to a milling machine, mm. and which would actually mill out of a solid block. Oh. It would mill a tooth or another component. Yeah. We've got on the premises. We've got one of these milling machines, mm. and they, um, which can deal with most aspects of what we do. Mm. Um, there are two milling centres in the world one in Sweden and one in Canada, oh, okay. who, if we do a major reconstruction, mm. perhaps the entire jaw, oh, okay. then we would email the information across to Sweden or Canada. And they, would they will manufacture a, a perfectly custom-made structure, wow. send it back to us within a week. Okay. Um, so if... If it's a large reconstruction, it mm. would take a bit longer. Oh, yes. If if it's a couple of teeth, mm. then the facilities we've got will allow us to to do this in one day. Wow. Okay. So we've got the facilities. Teeth in a day has been sort of advertised oh, okay. quite quite a lot, okay. and so you could actually come up, mm. turn up in the morning mm. with a missing tooth. Yeah. Walk out three o'clock, four o'clock in the afternoon with a fixed tooth in oh, your mouth. Wow, that's so quite amazing. It's, uh, it, yeah. it is exciting. Yeah. It's not for everyone, and okay. obviously the parameters must be right yes. so you don't jeopardise mm. the outcome or the, the success of what you've provided. But okay. it is certainly in many, many cases. A possibility to do that. So uh, I don't know a sporting accident, two front teeth knocked out. You could actually basically replace them. In, yes. In a in, in in the day. And and people would not know the difference between the 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 new teeth and and what's happened. No. Wow. No. Okay. Not even not, ideally. That's you cool. obviously you, you need to make this yeah. look as nice. Well, yes. As yeah. you can and natural as you can. Um, so you match teeth colour and all that kind of stuff? All that is all yeah. matched. Oh. Um, if you've got individual characteristics, you might have a, a spot or a discoloration on a tooth. Mm. You might want to copy that to make it look... Because mm. you wouldn't want a really white tooth among yeah, I know. Mm. other teeth. Because your teeth are, are a huge part of your face, aren't they? So, yes. So if, if you change those, then you're potentially changing how people perceive and see I guess absolutely oh, wow. and, and we, we do a lot of not just implants we do a lot of cosmetic dentistry mm. as well which has moved forward again with new materials if you mill ceramic you can mill it really really thin mm. so many times you don't even have to if you've got slightly crooked teeth mm. teeth slightly yellow mm. You've tried the whitening, but you didn't get them as white as you wanted. Yeah. You could have thin ceramic veneers bonded to the teeth. Oh, 
and very often we don't have to do any drilling wow. because they're so thin and, and you can certainly eat apples and yeah. you know everything afterwards it, it, it wouldn't restrict your diet okay. in, so, in any way. Okay so so obviously these are all new or fairly new exciting things that are happening yeah they, they obviously come at a cost yes uh, I presume so um so you obviously you've got a milling machine you've got the 3d rendering the software uh, so it, it's all that kind of stuff which yeah which is uh, presumably as a private um, practice that gives you that ability to go out and do these things that people are obviously wanting yeah wow. it does but obviously we would carry the the investment yes, cost indeed, it, yes. un unlike perhaps a GP surgery mm. where they mm. get the equipment that they need oh. as as a dentist you you have to purchase all these things mm. yourself and it it's it's always you need to judge what you need <laughs> yes. and what you don't need mm. um to to provide the treatments that and it's your business at the end of the day so yeah yeah so um so who who is sort of coming in to your practice for me, for example, um, are they are they wanting implants and yes, yeah, so it, it's it's quite 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 a few people are referred yeah. from other dentists. Okay, um, we obviously we advertise mm. uh, word of mouth. Yeah. I think the the biggest supply of new patients come from existing patients. Uh, referring their so friends, uh, relatives, okay. work colleagues, etc. Um, and, and people turn up because they possibly have a denture which mm. is, is not suiting them, they can't eat, or as you mentioned, sporting accidents. Yes, yes. Uh, hockey club, even if oh, you yes. know, you're supposed <laughs> to wear a mouth guard, um, mm. but sometimes, particularly. The mouth guards that you buy in the shop and you mould them yourself, yeah. they don't grip as well and they okay. come out of the mouth, and, and it, it, which is it's a very important thing mm. to have a, a custom made yeah. mouth guard. Um, obviously, particularly children as they grow, yeah. it's the same as shoes, they, they might not fit forever, yeah. but yeah. It, it, it's an important mm. thing because. Mm. If you knock a front tooth out, I mean, potentially, yeah. mm. that that would be a, a problem for you for the rest of your life. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Um, so any any sport mm. really. So um so um, with implants, I mean, there's always the the cheaper option of going abroad, for example. I mean, yes. it, it seems to happen in in most uh, medical areas. Yeah. So uh, is that the same? principle for, for these kind of things as well? It, it is okay. and, and I think with, with, with the expansion of Google well, yes. uh, <laughs> people would, would Google dental implants perhaps mm. they find a clinic in Romania mm. or, or Poland which will do them cheaper than we can okay. um, but there are several drawbacks that not necessarily that they are not experienced surgeons mm. but if if something goes wrong mm. success rate with with implants is, is very high as high as 98 percent oh really um, and that's over a long period of time uh, studies have shown over 23 years yep. success rate is still maintained but yeah. things you know, could happen yep if you've had something like this done in, in, in a foreign country, it may not be that easy to go back. And say, yes, I can imagine. Um, and it, it, that, that's, I, I think, why you'd want to keep it mm -hmm. local yeah. as well. And, and also, we are, as we mentioned before, we're regulated. Yes. We must follow procedures. procedures. And, yeah. We must use materials that follow the UK medical devices regulation, etc. Um, and to, to make these things cheaper, you must be cutting corners somewhere. Mm. And whether that's in the regulation or the actual materials that are used, mm. because there's hundreds of manufacturers yes, of, of, yeah. of implants. Mm. There's about four or five which are the dominant Okay. Uh, sort of leaders in the market, mm. 
and these implants are manufactured either in Sweden, America, Germany, Switzerland. So the, the four main sort yeah. of... Yeah, okay. and, but because it's a world market, the, the cost of an implant Could be. would be the same, yeah. because they set the prices. Oh, do they? Okay. So you would yeah. pay the same in, in Germany as you yeah. would in, 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 in the UK. Yeah. But then if someone managed to, to, to place these yep. for half the price, mm. well, they probably wouldn't buy those implants. No. They oh, buy a Chinese okay. copy. Okay, so uh, so the, as yeah. I said, it, it's it's local versus remote. It's it's all those. Yeah. I mean, it, it's the things you weigh up, and at the end yeah. of the day, if you make that decision you, and go, then yeah, the, I suppose yeah. there's risks and consequences to everything we do. Yeah, cool. And if you are the the extremely unlucky person, where the two percent mm -hmm. failure rate, and uh, where you get an infection yeah. and and yeah. something happens, well, at least. If yeah. I'm down the road, it's so much easier yeah, no, indeed, to indeed. Yeah. to get it okay. sorted out. So, so being implants are the the newest thing. Is it? Are there are there um other things in the future that are, are going to be hitting, or is this is this how it's going to be for a few more years? I would I would hope things would continue to yeah. to develop because it it makes everything more exciting. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of research going into stem cells okay. um, and I, I was quite recently to a meeting where a, a, a research group was mm. discussing what they were actually doing yeah. um, and they, they are quite a long way okay. in the development of fabricating in, in a similar three-dimensional structure mm. as, as we mill yeah. teeth um, Manufacturing, let's say, an entire jaw. Wow. Okay. Um, out of, of hydroxyapatite, which is a one of the building blocks in in human skeleton, human wow. bones. Uh, manufacturing a, a, a jaw for a cancer patient who's had mm. a huge section of the jaw removed. removed. Okay. Uh, with stem cells, they they were expecting to be able to grow blood vessel into this, wow. and that could then be placed in a patient okay. with with teeth, mm. and it, wow. it's it's just very very exciting. It doesn't apply perhaps to what I do at the moment, no, but, it, it, but it, in years it, to come, it, it will filter down, and it would be exciting to yeah. see what what else would come out of. Of, of this, obviously, that that's quite a, a a raw topic for some people. So maybe that's yeah. another another conversation in in the yeah. future on Felix Day TV. Maybe, yeah. yeah. Why not? So um so very briefly, as we we run out of time, yeah. Um, is um so if people want to contact you about any of the things we've discussed, how how do, how would they get in contact with yes, you? Yes, please. We're at Nine Cobbled Road. Um, telephone number is Felix Day, two seven four one two one, and. We've got a website, new for this year, and that's www.implantcosmeticdentures.co.uk. And it's a nice website. You, you can, <laughs> is it shiny? It is shiny, <laughs> and there's useful information about all the treatments that we, we carry out. Well, thank you very much for your time, Frederick. Thank you. It's been very interesting. Thank you very much for this, having me. That's so this has been Felix Stone Matters. Just on a very brief topic, if you actually want to be, be in my seat and present, or be behind the desk and do all the technical stuff that I have no clue about, then please get in contact with us also. Again, so thank you very much, and we will see you tomorrow. Goodbye. <laughs>